years in prison, and one that wanted to give the death penalty to women who have abortions. I am not kidding. 30 states so far in 2019 have either introduced, passed in one chamber, or signed into law near or total bans on abortion. What is their goal? To overturn Roe and criminalize abortion. So let me be very clear about that. When abortion is criminalized, people go to jail and women die. It's terrifying, but it's not surprising. This is exactly what Donald Trump told us he was going to do if he was elected. And he is delivering on that campaign promise. Reproductive rights litigators have already predicted that Roe will be overturned in the next one to three years. And even before this challenging year began, we were already preparing for a post Roe world. Do I hope that we are wrong? Yes. Do I think that we are? No. At this moment, it is hard not to feel numb. It is hard not to feel defeated. And it is hard not to feel helpless. But I have hope. In the midst of all of this chaos, I have hope. And more than hope, I know that we have power. Together, we hold critical, time-sensitive power, and that gets me to the good news. <laughs> Here's what I can tell you. 72% of Virginians support Roe v. Wade. decisions without politicians interfering. And that 72% includes the majority of Democrats, the majority of Republicans, and the majority of Independents. <laughs> Reproductive freedom is a moral issue. It is an economic issue. It is a public health issue. It is a civil rights issue. And it sure as hell is a winning issue in the Commonwealth of Virginia and all across this country. 7 in 10 people support access to abortion. They believe that women should be trusted and respected, not oppressed. We have the majority on our side. And that is why we cannot be silent when things get hard. Silence is surrender. Prior to January, NARAL Pro Choice Virginia spent six months developing a five-year strategic plan. And while we are planning for a post row world, we also know no matter what happens to Roe, access to abortion in Virginia is abysmal. There are only 15 abortion providers all across the Commonwealth. That's because in 2011, there was a trap law that was passed. At that time, we had 22 abortion providers. Still not good enough, but better. That must change, and that must change now. <laughs> Unfortunately, the full promise of Roe has never been achieved. Too many people do not have access to this vital, constitutionally protected right. That's because the Hyde Amendment prevents low-income women from accessing federal funds to pay for abortion care. That's because the Supreme Court opened up the door 
to states to enact trap laws that aim to severely shut off access to abortion while still keeping it legal on the books. That's because abortion is so stigmatized that doctors who could perform the procedure are too intimidated to do so. And that's just a few of the reasons people don't have access to affordable, timely, and shame-free abortion. But here's our vision. Amy and Brian alluded to it. For Virginia, we must flip the state, Senate, and the House of Delegates and make <laughs> General Assembly. And with the executive branch in pro-choice hands as well, we have at least two years to repeal the bad laws on the books and codify bodily autonomy in the Code of Virginia. So I want you all to say this with me, a little interactive here. Repeal and codify. Repeal and codify. That is our mantra, that is our goal. And if Senator Sasslaw recently mentioned at our annual legislative wrap-up event, a constitutional amendment enshrining Roe in the Virginia Constitution would just be the cherry on top now, wouldn't it? Yeah. So that would forever enshrine and protect reproductive health and rights for anyone who has, who can decide if, when, how, and with whom to have a family or to expand their existing family. This is our fundamental human right. Not only will these legislative goals help us begin to increase access to abortion for Virginians, it will allow us to become a safe haven for abortion in the South. You see, we are surrounded, our border states around us, and even way beyond that, are moving rapidly to ban abortion or severely restrict it. If Virginia can make these policy changes in the next one to two years, we will be a beacon of hope for not only access to abortion care, but for the other states around the country to give them hope that if they stand up and fight for reproductive health and rights, they will win too. They will flip their state houses and we will be able to enshrine this right in the Constitution of the United States. See, I told you there would be some good news. <laughs> but we have to work hard for this to make it a reality. So are you all ready to get to work? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of work to be done. And I know the NARAL Pro-Choice Virginia team is ready too. We are already talking to our allies in the movement, abortion providers, legal experts, activists, and of course, our wonderful elected pro-choice officials. <laughs> this. We must do this. This is not an option. So this vision and thoughts of victory in November keep me going. It actually helps me sleep at night. <laughs> and the lies spewed by anti-choice politicians at the expense of women and families across Virginia only encourage me and my team to work harder every day, and I know you will too. But it doesn't make what is happening in other states any less painful or horrifying. But it does give me hope and a laser-focused goal to achieve. We got a glimpse this past session of what will happen in Virginia if we do not win in November. Our opponents will stop at nothing to maintain power and control and intimidate our pro-choice legislators, advocates, and activists. 
If Speaker Kirk Cox and House Majority Leader Todd Gilbert <laughs> retain power after Election Day, this is my prediction. HB1, a total ban on abortion, will be filed. It's coming, mark my words. This should motivate you every day to talk about this issue with everyone you know, and of course, vote. Last week, anti-choice delegate Bob Thomas, who represents Fredericksburg, said he would like Virginia's laws to look just like what happened in Georgia and in Alabama. These are total bans on abortion. He wants to do the same thing here in the Commonwealth. That's what he promised would happen if they stay in control. But that will never, ever happen if we get to work and we win in November. <laughs> so here's what I need you to do. This is no time to remain silent. Please talk to those around you about what is happening and what we can do to fortify Virginia for a post-row world. Tell your elected leaders, all of them, I don't care if they're pro-choice or not, talk to them, <laughs> that you expect them to get off the sidelines and run towards the threats, not away. We must stand strong when our opponents smell weakness. They will True strength and leadership are shown when you get up after you've been knocked down again, 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 and you stand face to face and toe to toe with those who want nothing more than to knock you down and not let you get back up. That's when you punch back hard. Nayra Pro-Choice Virginia, is the accountability arm of this movement, and we take it very seriously. This is, we, yes, we do know that they are coming for Roe. They are coming for our rights, and they are coming for our freedoms. And that means we must lock arms and be ready and put them on notice as well, because we are coming for them too. <laughs> so last week, I had the privilege of taking my six-year-old daughter to meet Senator Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> I told Sydney to tell the senator what she wants her to do if she becomes president. And of course, I thought she would say, Fight for equality, because we talk about that a lot. <laughs> With all the look and determination of a kindergartner, she turned and looked dead into Senator Warner's eyes and said, get it right. <laughs> I was a little mortified for a hot second. <laughs> they did a pinky swear, and Elizabeth Warren said, I will get it right. Every woman and every person who can become pregnant in this state is counting on you. They are counting on me to get it right. So, are we going to do this? of the program, and I want to